Hey guys, Kelly here as I get geared up to go out safely into public. I'm gonna share today things that I wish people knew about my disease. I'll be right with you. For one, it is definitely not sexually transmitted. So people here um, autoimmune and they automatically start to assume that it's like AIDS and it is not. Um, AIDS is something that is sexually transmitted. Lupus is not sexually transmitted. It is unfortunately something they really don't know how it starts, where it comes from. There are many triggers. I know for me, I worked a very stressful job. I was a single pa a parent trying to put two kids, you know, through school and keep them out of trouble and that kind of thing. So um, stress is supposedly a trigger and there are no indicators that you could go out and go sleeping with folk and get lupus. So that's one thing I really do wish people would understand. It is not contagious. Another thing I wish people knew about my disease is that just because I look this way, I, does not mean that I am feeling at my best. It doesn't mean that I'm not sick. Um, we often hear, well, you don't look sick and nobody has really been able to tell us what sick looks like. And I always ask people when they say that to me, you know, that you don't look sick, you look great, you don't, you know, you don't look like you're battling your body. I always ask them, if you get a headache, does your appearance change? If you get a stomach ache, does your appearance change? Most people, no, you don't, you don't change. Um, the only time I know for sure that women will look sick is if we're accustomed to seeing them in makeup and for some reason that day they don't wear makeup. And then people are like, well, are you feeling okay? But this is what I look like, y'all. Sick, not sick, the whole nine yards. If you guys have been keeping up with my channel, you've seen me in the hospital and I'll still look like this, even with nonsense going on in my body to the point that they have to hospitalize me, I still look like this. So I wish people would stop thinking that you have to look a certain way in order for you to actually be sick. Another thing that I wish people knew about my illness is the fact that you don't get any warning. So this morning I feel great. You know, I'm standing out on my balcony, I've got my, my cup of coffee, and in two hours my body could be completely riddled with pain and I could be in the bed or in the hospital. Uh, so I really wish that people understood that when you hear someone with a chronic illness you know, that seemed like they were doing great today and later on the day they're not doing so good. They're not exaggerating. They're not making a mountain out of a molehill. Um, lupus is very unpredictable and it just kind of does what it wants to when it wants to. And so I just really wish that people would understand that we don't really have any control over what our body does. Even if you're healthy, you think that you do, but you really don't. Because um, if we had control, we would never have headaches. We would never have stomach aches. We would never not feel well. We would always be running on 100. And when we're not, we didn't do it. It wasn't because we wanted it. And it is the exact same way with lupus, except it is more frequent because again, it's chronic. Um, so I really wish that people understood that. Another thing that I wish people understood about my disease is that we are in a lot of ways um, considered disabled. We're considered um, handicapped. So when we pull up to the grocery store and we park in those handicapped spots and we've got those placards in our windows and someone harasses us because we've got all of our fingers, we've got all of our toes, we've got arms and legs and we're able to walk in. Keep in mind that just because you can't see our physical disability doesn't mean that we don't have them. I am single um, and so I'm the person that does all of my errands, pays all of my bills, does all of my groceries. So when I get out of the hospital with swollen hearts and crazy lungs and you know the whole nine yards, guess what? If there's no food at the house, I'm the person that has to go and get those things. And just because they've released me from the hospital doesn't mean that my heart is completely back at a normal size, doesn't mean that my lungs are back at a normal size. It just means that there's at a point where I can manage the remaining balance of what needs to happen at home. 
So I'm going into the, the store still with a portion of my heart swollen, still with a portion of my lungs swollen, still with low platelets or whatever that, that situation may have been for me um, being hospitalized. And then I'm getting out of my, my vehicle getting harassed. And, you know, so please, first of all, mind your business. But secondly, you don't really know someone else's story. And when people assume that just because you look healthy that you are and that you should be ashamed of yourself for parking in a, a handicapped spot, you should be ashamed of yourself for minding other people's business and harassing them. So we can flip that, that turn, turn that table on you. But that's something else that I wish people understood about this disease. It is insidious and it doesn't always show the world what it's doing to you personally. Why do I have a feeling that you had no idea that it takes, at least in the U.S., on average, seven, between seven and 10 years for them to diagnose lupus? So someone is suffering all of this time without an actual diagnosis. And again, this disease can be pretty insidious. So <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. One of the, the one of the lovely things that has come. You hear sometimes I have this cough when I'm on video. Um, I've never smoked a day in my life, and lupus attacked my lungs. So now I have a lung disease because of lupus. Uh, so it really just doesn't care. Everything in your body is off limits, and it's really kind of sad for me when I think about my lungs and the voice that you hear because this is not my natural speaking voice. I've been on YouTube, I think they let me know this morning for like eight years, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, for, you know, so if you go all the way back to the beginning to my videos, you'll hear, which is what I have to do to hear my, my own voice. Um, so lupus can be really ugly and mean and for it to take seven to 10 years for doctors to understand and to be able to diagnose that. It really has all of that time to be able to do so much damage that can't be undone. Um, I've shared in other videos that I had to go to the Mayo in order to be diagnosed. I was going from one specialist to the next specialist to the next specialist. And 2016, um, the end of 2015 when 2016 rolled in, I was calling it the year of the tombstone because of the things that were happening in my body that they couldn't explain that I really thought that I was going to die that year. Uh, and so I reconciled my life and here I am, you know, four years later, thank goodness for that. But it really is an ugly disease and if I would have had to go seven to ten years it wouldn't have happened at least for the dramatic and drastic things that were happening to my body and I actually got a doctor to confirm that in Bangkok he said had it not been for the fact that I was such a healthy athletic person that this disease probably would have taken me out so that's something else that I wish people understood was that it takes a really long time to um, diagnose lupus primarily because it presents itself in so many different ways in every single body. So I can't say that, you know, like with a cold, you could say, oh, well, I got a sore throat and my nose is runny and, and you know, um, I got some body aches. And you could say, oh, well, maybe you've got a cold or maybe you've got the flu. It doesn't work that way with lupus. So it's really difficult for doctors to diagnose. That's something else I wish everybody knew. Nature around here is going absolutely insane. Uh, anyway, so something else that I wish everybody knew about my disease is that it affects every portion of your body or can affect every portion of your body. There's not one thing that is off limits. Um, <clears throat> so you can be pretty mild, so I've, I've heard the tale of people that will say to me, well, so-and-so has lupus and she's living a normal life. And I will reach out to her and find out she ain't living no normal life. But, and to me, if you've got to be on any form of medication every day of your life, that is not normal. So we have to be on medication pretty much every day of our lives. And we have kind of come to the spotlight this year, uh, courtesy of uh, COVID-19 where everyone knows that for the most part, most of us are going to be taking hydrochloroquine. Um, and so every day, that's not normal that you have to be on something 
every single day. But <clears throat> the other thing is that you can have something really mild when it comes down to lupus, or you can have something really severe when it comes down to lupus. There is no, again, as I mentioned before, it takes seven to 10 years because it presents so differently in, in everyone's body. So some people that appear to be living a, no, a normal life, they're able to still get up every morning and go to work. They may have minimal body aches. They may have, you know, I, I know one young lady, she, has, she got glaucoma in her 20s and that was the only symptom that she has had and has ever had is that her eyesight uh, was attacked and that's all she's ever had. Whereas for people like me, it's attacked my lungs, it's attacked my liver, it's attacked my blood platelets, it's attacked my heart, it's attacked all these different things that make it impossible for me to do a lot of things that what normal people, if you will, would be able to do. So again, the severity, just because you know somebody and they're looking like they're living a normal life, doesn't mean that that translates to everybody who has lupus. Um, we are as individual as our fingerprints when it comes down to this disease. The other thing that I think that people don't really understand is that just because we can't work don't mean that we automatically get benefits either. I wish it was that way because my behind has been working for the last four years um, with this phone in my face or a camera in my face or on uh, the internet saying, hey, I will write for you, I will, you know, blog for you or whatever those things are. And um, I wish people understood that we can still work. Look, I'm out of breath, trying to show off, trying to, trying to walk up my stairs without, you know, walking and talking, not something I normally do. <sighs> okay, so um, I wish people understood that we can still work, but we work better sitting we work better from our beds because a lot of times we're in pain but if you've got work from home positions writing positions freelance positions customer service positions those kind of things if we get to state what our hours are what we can do you know because we still have oh y'all we still have bills to pay and we still have um you know we we gotta eat and so we are not damaged goods and I will be honest with you this may sound really bad but the one good thing if there is a good thing that has come out of this pandemic <coughs> <coughs> excuse me is it has shown these companies which the the handicapped community I won't even just say the autoimmune community has been asking for opportunities to work from home um, for a really long time and companies basically ignored us and looked at us like we couldn't we couldn't do the job because we were sick and now they're learning that having an option to work from home really for the companies that already had that in place they're thriving and surviving better than the ones that are scrambling trying to figure it out so if you need hard workers but they can't come into the office hey here we are so um, I think that learning that we are not useless just because we hurt just because we lay in the bed a lot um, doesn't mean that we can't still work so that's another thing I think that people should know the other thing that I think that people should know um, if you're watching this video is one I am wearing clothes <laughs> I thought about that as I was walking through the house. I was like, you look like you don't know, you like, like I usually wear a necklace or something. I didn't, I was like, you look like you ain't got no clothes. That's, that's not cool. Um, but I'm wearing, I'm wearing things. Uh, but the other thing that I think people should know, I hope that guy doesn't start that truck up again, is that um, the fatigue. Again, I mentioned earlier that symptoms kind of come on you. You can wake up in the morning. I knew he was gonna start that dang on loud ass truck. Uh, that symptoms come on you and you don't really get any warning. It's kind of the same way with lupus fatigue. So there was a time that I was very social and I would make all of these plans and I would be like, yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, I'll be there. Now my standard line is I won't make, I don't know why he had to move that truck. He moved that truck about 10 feet. 
ruining my video. Okay, now that he's backed up and moved forward and backed up and turned around and all that good stuff, I can finish saying what I was trying to say. So my standard practice now is I won't make you any promises and if you need a head count, then count me out. Because I can again wake up today and feel great and lupus seems to know when you're looking forward to something and tomorrow can be a wonderful event that I've been looking forward to for months and I will wake up tomorrow and just be in a world of pain and crazy fatigue. And the unfortunate thing about the lupus fatigue is that it's not a thing where you could say, I'm gonna take a nap. Sometimes lupus fatigue has you so exhausted that if you try to fight it, you'll find yourself passing out, you'll find yourself throwing up, um, and it really can ruin a really good time. So the best thing that you can really do is to give in to it and go to bed. And if you have RSVP to something or made plans for something that required a head count and you don't show up, you can really start to ruin some really great relationships. So I wish that people understood that when your body tells you to sit down, lay down, get down, you know, when it, when it allows you to do that, you have to do that. Um, and so for me, whenever my body is feeling great, I squeeze in as much stuff as I possibly can. And for many of us, we know we're gonna pay for that. If we do everything we can do today, tomorrow, the next day, and the day after that, and maybe the day after that, we're gonna pay for it. And for a lot of warriors, they have decided, I'm just not gonna do anything because I don't wanna pay for it. But for me personally, I've decided it's a chronic pain illness. I'm going to have pain whether I have fun or not. So guess what? When I can live it up, I'm gonna live it all the way up. So, but that's just me, y'all know me. All right, so let me see, what else do I wish that people knew about this disease? So another thing that I wish people knew about lupus is it's incurable. And I think that that is the part that for many of us, we have an issue with it. And for many of you that are healthy, have an issue with it because again, we look great. Don't I look great this morning? Me and my little coffee. Um, but I think that that is something when you are told that your body is never going to be right, no matter how many medications you take, no matter how many infusions you get, no matter how many treatments you go to, it's never going to be right. Even remission isn't quite the same thing as what we think of remission. Basically remission boils down to you're not flaring uh, is the way I interpret that because I really thought of remission as a way to get my life back and that is not the case at all. Um, so I think that which is another thing that I guess people should know about our disease. Remission does not mean that you get your life back. Uh, so that can create some problems mentally for those of us that are battling it because we want so badly to have our lives back, especially if you were anything at all like me, where you were highly active, a uh, very big overachiever. Um, I was a high income earner, and now that's not the case anymore. You know, um, lupus and all the things that come with it have eaten away at what I thought was going to be a phenomenal retirement. And not that living in Mexico ain't bad, but you know, I wanted to be doing a lot more, if you will than what it is that I'm doing. And I had set myself up to be able to do that. But what I didn't you know, set myself up for was a chronic illness, hospital rotations, uh, multiple specialists in my life, and, you know, and, and limitations that require me to have assisted daily living devices and that kind of thing. So um, it being incurable and knowing that, one, I'm aging, so I'm gonna have the things that come with growing older and then I have this other portion of the battle with my body and that really is a lot so um, I think you know you all knowing that it is incurable so we're gonna be doing this to the end of days y'all to the end of days 
Another thing that I wish people knew about this disease is that, okay, so I've talked about how we're battling our bodies. What I didn't really talk about was us battling our minds. So mentally, this thing can jack you up. And I, I mention that only because I've always been, you, you guys have watched my videos. I am a, I'm a find a silver lining in freaking lead. I've always been just a happy, happy person. I'm like, where's my camera? Y'all like, what's she looking at? It's over there this time, girl. <laughs> um, anyway, um, I'm always going to be upbeat for the most part, happy. My, my coping mechanism is my sense of humor. So I really don't know how to be openly down, openly blue. And with lupus, uh, it has given me depression. It has given me anxiety uh, because you just don't, your body is completely unpredictable. Your life is completely unpredictable and you have to make uh, provisions for things that like I never thought about before. Again, I'm in a foreign country and if you guys have been following my channel since I've been sick, this is the third foreign country that I've called home in the last four years. So I've got video from Nicaragua. I don't know if I did a lot of video from Thailand. I know I did a lot of Facebook lives from Thailand, um, but you know, I spent two years in Thailand and I've been here in Mexico um, a little bit more. You know, I've been here about a year and a half. And before I leave and go to these countries, there is a ton of research that has to be done because I need to make sure that if I've got to be put in the hospital, how that works. If I've got, you know, I've got to have my specialist because my body has special things happening. I'm special. So, you know, I have to make sure that those things are in place. I have to understand how the medication, you know, getting my, the, the essential meds that my body needs to survive. I have to understand how that process works. And, you know, so there's all of these places that I can't go that I would love to go to even for a visit because again your body is very unpredictable and I can tell you that for me really long flights I'll be down for the count for the first two weeks when I flew to Thailand I got there like the third of October by the fifth of October if I recall correctly or something like that I was in the hospital for eight days when I came back from Thailand I was on the sofa for two weeks um, and then I ended up stuck in the US for three months with all of these new health things so I have to make sure that when I get ready to travel that there are all of these provisions if you will in place and I've got to see you know the medications that I'm traveling with you know how can I bring those through customs and I mean like there's all this stuff that restrictions and things that, that once upon a time you didn't have not to mention the fact that um, you know for me right now which I guess say right now for me going forward I have a lung disease and so some days I've got good energy where I can come up the stairs and you know if I ain't talking not be winded and then there are other days when I have to walk with a walker because I don't have the energy to even hardly stand everybody want to be in my video today <laughs> um, you know so that messes with you when when you're a person that you know was dubbed a hurricane and now you just a tropical breeze <laughs> you're not even a storm anymore you know so mentally the things that you can no longer do the earning you can no longer have the way that society even sees you um, I know that when I'm in the airport and again a lot of you all are now in my opinion temporarily living my full-time life where you've got the masks on and you got to be concerned about the next person being sick lupus squashes your immune system when they put you on the meds and you are unable to fight off <coughs> excuse me even a common cold and because if your body gets a cold one it can't fight it off but if it was working at full lupus speed it's going to fight it so hard that it can still kill you so you know people are living our lives temporarily with the masks and making sure that they stay away from sick people and making sure that they're well sanitized and and, and staying at home we've been doing that and it's kind of you know cool to know that now I can go into the airport with my bald head and not have people go, oh poor thing she must be sick I don't need you to feel sorry for me you know but 
you know, it, it's a lot when you're looked at by even by strangers, like you are pathetic, you are a defect, something's wrong with you. So they either are kind to you because they feel sorry for you or they stay the hell away from you because whatever you got, they don't want, <laughs> you know, and then you meet normal people in there too, of course. But, um, you know, so it's, it weighs heavy on your head. And <clears throat> so I really wish people knew that this isn't just a physical kind of thing, if you will. We have had in a lot of cases, in my case I can say, and in some of the other uh, warriors that I've spoken with, we have been altered physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially, professionally. Like we didn't have all the leaves and it all happened at one time. And we don't get to say, oh, well, I'm just gonna work on the financial when your body acting crazy. You don't get to say, oh, I'm just gonna work on the spiritual when you're, when you're just down and, and depressed. You know, so you, they all need to be addressed and you can't prioritize that. You, got, you, know, you gotta eat, you know, uh, and if you lose your job, you know what I'm saying? So those types of things I think that people need to understand that this thing really affects you on a much deeper level than just your body. Okay, so the last thing, there's probably, a, I could probably come up with a boatload more things, but the last thing I'm going to put out there is probably one of the most important things, even though it's not necessarily, um, it's not a physical thing, I guess it will probably fall still under the category of mental health. Um, it is the feeling that lupus leaves you of being abandoned and being a burden and the guilt. So if I wanted, you know, anybody to know the, the, the most important thing is when someone is ill like we are, it really is, if you haven't uh, gathered that from most of what I've shared in this, in this video, um, it really is huge for us. It is a, a big cornerstone in our lives and we talk about it. It's no different than being excited, sadly, that you got a new job or had a new baby or bought a new house. It's huge. And we're going to talk about it. And unfortunately, because it's an illness, it makes people uncomfortable. They don't really know what to say. So um, they start avoiding us, if you will. Uh, I laugh about that, but that's, I, I, that's the best way I know how to put it is like, oh, she's going to talk about being sick again and she's never going to get well and I really don't know what to say. I want you to understand that you don't have to say anything. For many of us, we just want to actually be heard and we want to know that you care and that we still matter. So please don't start avoiding us. Please don't stop inviting us. We want to come and when and if we can, we will, but we can if you don't invite us. So I know a lot of people feel like, well, she's just going to cancel anyway. She's not going to show up. But if she can show up, she will show up. But if you don't give that opportunity, we just feel like we lost that friend that they don't they no longer want us around and that really may not be your perspective you just kind of feel like well i'm just not even going to invite her because she's not going to come but leave that part to us um many of us feel like nobody really understands and really honestly that's the truth if you're not going through this you can empathize but you cannot ever understand and i hope that if you're watching this and you are a healthy person I hope and pray you never get an understanding of this because to understand it means you're living it. And I don't want this for anybody, to be honest with you. It breaks my heart when I see new people joining our support group because I know that means they're battling their bodies. And this is not a cool thing. It is not fun. And I don't care how much I smile and laugh through it. That's just my way, but it's not easy. Um, so I want you to know that in many cases, we really just want an ear to listen. And unfortunately, our new house is new every month. And so we're gonna talk about it. There was a point in time where I said, you know, I'm just sick and tired of lupus. And, and I battled with even talking about it um, as a topic here on my YouTube channel. Uh, so if you are enjoying my content, first of all, I haven't said this yet, I don't think, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you, you know, 
hit that bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I got new content. And I know I talk about a heavy topic. I'm rarely ever heavy about my heavy topic just because I got great teeth and I like to show them. You can't be, you can't smile when you're down, right? So, um, but anyway, so we still want to be included. And now that you know that it ain't contagious, you can invite us, girl, stop acting crazy. You ain't going to get it. <laughs> you, know. <laughs> you know, but um, so I want you all to understand that, that we don't expect you to fully get it, but we would like to be included. We do want to know that you care and you may not always know what to say. And you know what the best thing to say when you don't know what to say is? You know what? I really don't know what to say about that, but I'm here to listen. Honesty. Oh my gosh. You know, and that pretty much, I guess, is the last thing that I want to share that I wish people knew about this disease is that it could be really lonely. And it could be lonely in a crowded room because nobody really gets it per se, but at least we want you to listen. And, you know, and again, I guess when I talk about honesty also, if you've got a person, and there are these people, I ain't gonna lie, they bring me down, where their woe is me, tell them, you know, I love to invite you, but you really, you, you kinda, I hope you're not offended by this, but you kinda drag the mood down. I mean, like for me, I talk about lupus, and I do my best not to, but lupus is my life in a lot of ways. It keeps me home, um, it, took my job that I loved or my, my career that I loved. Um, I'm doing things to combat depression. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hobbly some days, I'm winded some days. I'm, you know, every single day this thing affects me and I finally had to accept that I couldn't just ignore it because it will not be ignored. It's an ass. Um, but having friends that still include me Having friends that will listen to me um, and know that even though they can't understand what I'm going through, they are still willing to be there for me in their own way really does help me mentally. And uh, yeah, so, all right, I'm gonna stop running my mouth now. I'll see you guys in the next one. Again, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you think these videos can help uplift someone, cause that's usually what I'm trying to do please be sure to share this. And, and they don't have to just be battling lupus if they're battling depression, anxiety, um, their body in another way, you know, another autoimmune disease or what have you. Uh, I, I try to, to share our experience or my experience, if you will, in a light way, because this is how I deal with it. And um, hopefully I'll help somebody else. That's kind of the point of me putting all my business out in the street, putting my stuff in the street <laughs> is to help me and to help you as well all right guys i will see you guys next go around thanks for watching ciao